Okay, so I just want to go through very quickly how you can draw something like this uh, brake symbol that you can see here that I've got for the stairs. So this uh, little diagonal uh, set of lines with the, of course, the other one running across. So what I'll just uh, very quickly do is copy this plan across so that I've got a version without the brake line. And maybe show you how you can easily get these things to the original state they're in. So uh, yes, yeah, I would I'd definitely have a layer for stairs. Yeah. So I'm just putting these all back to the original stair layer that I've got. And I oh yeah, just that one last line there. So that's how the stair will look when you first set it out. And if you haven't done much of that before, maybe I'll just very quickly show you um, a couple of tricks there. You might think, oh no, he's getting rid of all the stairs, that's going to take forever to put back. But it won't. So I've got there the starting point that you might have been able to get to by looking at the dimensions there. You've got the measurements and, oh god, my dimension is... Um, going a bit crazy because I've got different dimension styles but um, I'll just fix that one that's sorry, not too worried about the dimensions I'm not trying to show you that but I just want to make it look look better and I've forgotten even what names I've used here I just bought that of course from a different file and it is using the uh, and it, oh, it's the original annotated that's why okay so I'll just fix that so I just can't handle looking at something that's wrong So, that's better. Okay, so you can see the dimension over there, 4250. And if you count up the number of steps and divide that by 4250, you'll get the dimension of that tread, which, you know, I know because I've drawn it, it should be 250. Right, so that's the length there. And then the width, you've got that dimension is 1,000. And then the other one is 50 um, for the handrail or the stringer on the side. And then you can, of course, you know, offset 250 to copy those. There's a couple of simple tricks for then repeating that without having to offset each one. You can copy a group of them. And notice I didn't select the first one because I want to use that to get my base point. And that then has the things that I'm copying set out by 250, of course, because that's our thread size and then I can just go along and copy in a group and then I can even pause that and then select the larger group now that I've created by copying and just save some time by copying obviously a larger number and we've got too many but that's easy to delete. So that gets you to that point where you've got all the threads showing and then we want to have the break line. So there's a bit of a convention. You should have the stairs and other things being cut at the same height as your other elements, which is generally about 1,200 or 1,500 above your floor level for the height of your cut plane. And you can actually work that out. If you go into the section, you can work out exactly where that is if you want to. But most people don't go that far. They just guess or eyeball it. And uh, so it'll be about maybe six or seven steps if you've got one, they're not 190 rises, they're probably 150 rises. So 150, if it's 1500, it's going to be 10 steps, obviously, but maybe we'll do a couple less than that. So maybe about eight steps. So counting, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So about here is where I want my brake line to be. So I'm going to draw a line going across diagonally. Again, just eyeballing it where I want my brake line to be. And I'll leave it on this heavy layer for the time being, just so it stands out for you, and then I'll, I'll change the layer afterwards. So then to draw that, um, that break symbol, a couple of little tricks. We're going to draw a line from the midpoint of this diagonal line. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to even then make sure that um, I've got ortho and uh, polar both turned off so I can draw virtually any angle I want without it snapping. And it's still bringing up the reference lines, but I'm not worried about that. So I'm just going to get the angle by eye and maybe zooming in makes it a bit easier. For just one line. Now you might have to have a few goes at that to get the right angle. 
So with that, now I can select that line, go to mirror, pick the end of it, and then come back perpendicular to my, um, my baseline. Okay, so then I'll select those two lines, and then do mirror again, and this time select the end of one of those lines and then click the end of the other one. So it's clipping it over that baseline. And then I'm just going to select those two new lines and move them across. That gives me a nice break symbol. And uh, then I can simply use trim with the two lines at either end and break that longer line. And there we are. So maybe that's not very pretty. So a couple of things you can do to make it look a bit nicer. Maybe you can scale it down a little bit using the scale tool. I can just click on the um, endpoint there in the centre. So maybe I want to make it 80% of its current size, so I'll type 0 0.8 and just scale it down, then I'm just going to fill it to join those lines again. Right, so a fairly easy thing to just draw on the fly. And um, again, because they're very different sizes quite often and often different shapes even, depending on what you're actually trying to show being broken, um, I find it's often easiest to draw them as you go rather than trying to use a block. Um, and so then I'll put it onto the right layer. So I've got a layer for my, uh, I'll just use my annotation layer um, that I've got there. I don't have a, a symbols layer yet, so I'll just use that annotation. That's okay. In fact, no, they should be a bit heavier than that. So I've got one for the title. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so then the final thing, we've got to break these steps uh, so we can have a dash line where the break line cuts them. So that's where you can use this great, it's a fairly new tool in Revit, actually, in AutoCAD, uh, that they took from Revit, which is break at point. So we've got the break one that I showed you before, and then next to that you've got break at point. So with it, you can just choose the line that you want to break, and then click on the intersection to break it exactly at that point. And you can see now I've got a separate line that I can pick and put onto my, uh, the dash layer that I've got. And I've got, I've been a bit um, lazy here and just used the one layer for everything that's above. Instead of having a stairs above, I've just got A above for everything that I want to be dashed. Um, we can't see the dash there because it's such a short line. So I'll go and break the next one. Now, I'll just give you a tip with that break at point. If you're used to using enter to repeat your last command, it doesn't work with that one because it's actually just the original break tool with a little subroutine. So you have to go and pick it each time to use it from the uh, ribbon there. You can't press enter to repeat it. So again, just choose the line. There we are. So I've broken all these lines, and now I can put the half or the part that I want onto my above layer. And you can see the dashes now because those lines are long enough for the dashes to come up. And there we are. So that's all you need to do for the stairs. Technically, this line should be broken in there, but when you zoom out, no one's going to know. So I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That, so again, you could use a block for that, but I've just drawn lines. Yeah, it's fine. Yep. Uh, no, that's, not, that's a hatch. So that's just a single line hatch with a 200 mil spacing, 45 or 135 degrees get the angle, but just a single line hatch, yeah. And, oh yeah, now the the edge of it, you don't need to have that wavy line, you could just draw it straight if you want to, but that's just a bit of a presentation thing if you want to have a nice wavy line. Good chance if you want to try the spline tool, which is one of the tools we haven't really looked at, but it's a nice one in AutoCAD. You've got this spline tool that will let you draw any sort of curve you like. If you like organic designs, that's a great one for things like that. So, I don't know if I've shown you my contour drawing that I spent ages on. Um, have I shown you that one? 
No. Um, oh, I always forget where I put it. Somewhere in here. Um, uh, it's not that one. Uh, where is it? Um, so it's of uh, Bradley's head, if you know where um, the Chandra Zoo is. And I had to draw the whole thing up for a project I was doing. Uh, hmm. I'll dig it out later. Yeah, so I'll show that to you in a minute, but it'll take me a minute to find it. And uh, yeah, you'll see it's got hundreds of splines. And um, AutoCAD is one of the best programs for drawing splines. So if you've got to do a lot of them, AutoCAD's a great one to try. But uh, yeah, all I really wanted to see there was the stairs, so hopefully that's going to give you some ideas for doing that.